and we are back on 90.7 The Music FM. Um, what we just heard was AFI with Miss Murder, and um, you'll see that J-Rod right showed 9.7 The Music FM. ESPN did a little projection of the most stacked rosters, and the Toronto Blue Jays made it. So, um, the Buffalo Bisons might have, with the Buffalo Bills and their playoff drought, the Buffalo Bisons uh, will have the longest active playoff drought um, amongst... Um, Buffalo sports teams, but I am lo- really liking this roster. Um, Montero, uh, Jesus Montero is the player to watch this year. Junior Lake. Um, here's an interesting name, L. Albuquerque. Just like, just like that weird I'll give his song Albuquerque. If I have time, I'll play that song, but it's going to um, be a little bit of a long while. But the Bias begin to, next week against the... Um, the Roch, um, the Rochester Red Wings, and um, we'll see if they can end their playoff drought. Let's go back to two thousand five. Um, on to the majors. Um, do the Yankees have a? F- um, the go- the the Gregorius is the Dean Gregorius is more proof that the Yankees are unfair. I mean the the, the crowd was booing Stanton yesterday. He he had a bad game, but the Yankees still won eleven to four. That's not how it goes. Later in the game, almost immediately the boos Gregorius got a stand ovation. This is far more interesting than the very local local six percent of Yankee Stadium booing Stanton. This was the way to the, the explain the Yankees, not just the two thousand eighteen Yankees. But everything they represented the last 20 years, everything they've accomplished and continue to accomplish, the reason they're the most enviable and low team of all these years. Gregorius with the Yankees is bef- um, Gregorius with the Yankees is the Yankees because he came over because he came around when everything was ended for the franchise. What goes up must come down. The Yankees looked like they were fumbling, stumbling into a dark period when they lost Rodriguez, Ellsbury. The Yankees have not had a losing season since 1992, and that streak's not going to end anytime soon. You look at the Patriots, the end is near. You look at the um, San Antonio Spurs, the end is near. I'll probably talk a little more about this than around the campus, but it seems like a lot of these dynasties could be coming to an end. But the Yankees, it's probably not going to end anytime soon. Um, they lost Jeter, so the Yankees got a new source up. So they found Gregorius, 25-year-old, two. Shorts out with 226, 298 on base percentage. Cut to three years later, Gregorius has established a respectable two way shortstop. More than that, he's a sluggish shortstop compared to some of his Baseball America write ups. He has a 722, 4 on base percentage in the, in the minors. It's completely stereotypical for a glove first step. And when the Yankees acquired him, he made good on that promise. Um. Step number one is that you recognize he's a player who's undervalued and has untapped potential. It's not that Gregor- it's not that Gregorius was out of tra- was without trade value. Lots of teams appreciated his tools, and he was highly thought of as a buy low candidate. But the Bombers came on coming out of the over the top with a young cost controlled pitcher who had already proven his worth in the major leagues to get a trade done. Green was highly thought of back then. Well, that the Tigers preferred to him as Robbie Ray. And he was fi- and he had a fine season last year too. The Yankees were willing to give up the, because of, of they believe Gregorius had chances had to be something more than Brendan Ryan, and they were right. This is what the Yankees are great at: the underrated component to their success. The money and ability to casually slip con- con- stand into the lineup is the obvious pillar hold up the whole enterprise, and the ability to develop super duper stars is what power them right now. They did it with Hicks, Warren, Colon, Garcia at the same time. Um, fix the player or rubber but I said secret. Um, these are the Yankees tactics. If the Tigers traded Ray straight up for Gregorius and sent Douglas away, would the Gregorius be still be available today? Possibly. Probably not though. It is not just Yankee Stadium, it's a fifth for Gregorius. It's the entire Yankee franchise. They're a failure to sprinkle in like Carter and Davis made a few, so it's not like they could wave the wand over and make them true Yankees. They can scout players as well. They can identify ways to improve them. They can implement the improvements. It's how Aaron Judge went for the bottom tier prospects on the top 100 list. Mostly because he can come in with pre-installed power. That's fine. Out of fine. So he's a complete hitter. 
It's how Gary Sanchez has hit more homers in the majors than he ever did in the minors. Um, the Yankees just employ smart people who do a little bit better than their jobs than their peers. Um, my book is a free... Um, the Yankees tend to exceed expectations they've done so for decades. It's how they maintain a great farm system that they draft. They may they managed to stay over five hundred for years. The Yankees never really had to rebuild. It's like the hate. I mean, everyone thought the Yankees were gonna finally go away. Um They were predicted to go in 2013. They were predicted to go 79-83. Um, they had Link, Nix, Overbay, Wells, Hefner, Wells. All of them were over 30. Sabathia was aging. In 2015, the Phillies lost 99 games. The Yankees were set to lose 100. That's how the cycles were going to go. But the contracts catch up to them. The cracks, and then 2014, Jeter. Um, Jeter retired. It, made, it was made more annoying in 2015 when the Yankees did not lose 100. So not to the Yankee haters. They won 87 and made the wild card game. But they got crushed in the first round. Lose to the Mirage. But then they get, then they get Judge, Gregorius, and boom, they're back at the ALCS. The recent Beltran McCann Street of ability to avoid nine year figure contracts will give them room to blow up free agent market soon. All without the painful rebuild the Phillies are going through. Without the painful rebuild the Yankees have been waiting for since Jorge Posado in his late thirties. Instead they'll load it and they're set for the future. If you're worried about the payroll and how much money they make, that's an understandable. But the, how the Yankees um avoid a complete rebuild is the first place is what's scary the most. Aaron Judge was drafted 32 second overall in 2013, um, and which means that most of the base teams in baseball could have had him. But someone else could, could the, the Rays, the Giants, the Athletics, the Reds, but no, he went to the Yankees. Except it didn't work like that. If the Giants had Judge, I'm convinced that he would have he would be an everyday player, much less an MVP candidate. The ability of all 30 teams is to six metric tons of hitting the clay and mold the All-Stars was not distributed equally. The Yankees did it, though. Just like they did with Gary Sanchez. Just like they were probably going to do with Torres and Frazier. And it's not like limited to just hitters. Considering Luis Severino fell off the wall and shared a million pieces last year. But the Yankees are capable of calmly, calmly rebuilding him piece by piece. Um, they're doing the kind of eternal development magic that the Rays or the A's needed to contend with. Except that the Yankees. Which means they can also afford to slap Todd Frazier to the roster as well. Not every team can build an Aaron Judge from a kit and get it together from the mail, but the Yankees did. And it might be the scariest skill that a rich organization can have. They have been in the missteps along the way. It took a different set of mechanics to rebuild Ivan Nova, for example. But their set is up as well as any team in baseball when it comes to the current roster. It all came without pain. Um, well, as Yogi Berra said, deserve it, deserve's got nothing to do with it. Now, it's not with the Yankees. The Yankees are cut of the line. But you can't accuse the Yankees of, bu- of buying a championship. Yes, they got Stanton, but they mostly built for with. It, uh, but they mostly built it from within. And as far as the small market teams, look at the Cleveland Indians. This is their third year in a row being competitive. They're not losing players as they've been in the last couple of years. the The Yankee the Yankees did it on their own. And I, and I mentioned the, the Patriots and the Spurs, but we'll see if they can remain good for a while. But the Yankees pretty much built it within their farm system. They didn't go out get many major players. I mean, who knows how long the Yankees run will last. Maybe forever. But, um, four, this is all four years of the Yankees. The, Yan- the, Yan- the narrative is that the Yankees decided to rebuild a year ago in July that traits of Chapman and Miller represent the final realization the Yankees were headed to go in a new direction. The Yankees actually made that decision several years earlier. The trades in July 2016 were the beginning of the process. They were the end of it. Or pass more accurately, they were the most visible ones in the process well in a way. It wasn't obvious because most of the teams that rebuild sent out a clear signal of the, by first collapsing. The Yankees continue to snap in useful parts, some young ones who might be a part of the next great Yankee team, such as Gregorius and Hicks. And some of the ones that allow the Yankees to continue to win and draw 3 million fans, plus fans. 
the trains of Cha <coughs> Chapman, Miller, Beltran, and McCann were redistribution of assets, adding more young talent, but they were highly a capitulation. Meanwhile, this will all be this all being done over the goal of getting, of course, getting the Yankees under the luxury tax threshold 2018. Meanwhile, the next wave of young Yankees will be arriving in Torres, Frazier, Adela, Sheffield, Adams. Rebuild the system and flush out older players. Incorporate young star incorporate young stars. Keep win keep the winning to keep the money flowing. The Astros are a team known for its process. The Yankees have their own process, and in many ways it's been more impressive than the teams they've rebuilt easily by collapsing. For the Yankee haters who really hadn't noticed that the Yankees were going do in the last past of years, there might be some hope. The key architect for the most recent dynasty, Gene Michael, has passed away a few weeks back. Michael never really retired, or was still advising the the Yankees. It was his advice that they had to get Eddie Gregorius. And then just this week, the Cashman named to fix the Yankees' development problem four years back. Denbo left the Yankees to join the Marlins as his former mentee. The Jeter's led the Chicago development. Two key losses. Yet history says Cashman has a deep bench to replace both. I'll say this. Cashman made a lot of mistakes signing players because he feels he needs to, to overpay. But as far as the prospects evaluation and in-season in trades... Cashman is arguably the best GM out there. Every single year, Cashman makes some in-season in, in move for his other team going back to the mid-2000s. Uh, um, what you're saying is the Yankees are an organization that did an awesome job of rebuilding almost under the radar without having any horrible season. Whereas the Sox had three last play finishes in six years and two quick, two, two quick exits for the playoffs. So, what do you... What are your thoughts on the Yankees? Hit me on Twitter at JRed Show. We've got three minutes before we're on the campus, so I'll stick to it to till then. If you have a quest, hit me on Twitter at JRed Show. And keep on tonight point seven the music FM. Come on, this is a day's Broadcasting gone. live from the third floor of Genesee Community College. This is WGCC FM Batavia. Your home for Batavia's best music, commercial free. Since you've been gone by a day to remember on ninety point seven the music FM, we got three minutes before the um trip. We got three minutes before um around the campus, but um we got some more sports talk to do. So talk about the NHL and the NBA a little bit of the PGA Tour. Um, talk about the PGA Tour. 